wishing you a very happy Financial Literacy Month. In this episode of the Seven Figure Squad, I'll be introducing a new language to you called Millionese by breaking down the three steps to create wealth. That's correct, Millionese. By learning these three steps here in 2021, this could potentially be the year that you stop worrying about money ever again. So let's get right to it, starting here. Three, two, one, let's go. Never short stopping, now I'm winning like I'm Jida. Steady through the rigor, yeah, I'm getting bigger. It's fighting in them trenches, now I'm making seven figures like. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Sapal here, hailing to you back here in Oak Brook Terrace, Illinois, a direct west suburb of downtown Chicago. And in today's episode, You'll be watching under the live workshop I did while we were in Tacoma, Washington last week, sharing about the three steps of how to create wealth. By the way, a lot of people are very interested and excited about it because Seattle, Washington, Tacoma, Washington was very, very heavily hit by the pandemic and all the shutdowns in that state. Last week was pretty interesting. My son and I were in four different cities, five different days, six different airports. And just like we did in Memphis, the South Shore of Chicago, Louisville, Kentucky, Dallas, and Austin, Texas. We are doing our part to make sure that the overlooked and underserved communities in the Pacific Northwest have access to information and financial literacy to help them change their lives for the better, just like it did for me. So in this live workshop, I'm gonna break down the three steps on how to create wealth instead of speaking a financial language called broken knees, how we can start speaking million knees. So bust out the notebooks. Here we go. Let's get started. No college degree, no sales background, no financial background, no insurance background. I figured this business out. And, uh, and, and uh, the last time I took a paycheck from somebody, the last time somebody sent me a check, what do you call those things? Um, w, W2s? The last time I was looking for a W2 in the mail to get my tax refund done was 2003. The last time I took a paycheck from somebody was 2003. Here's why. As soon as I found out what I was worth, I didn't want anybody ever to pay me a paycheck. And that's the battle for everybody in America. If you realize what you were worth, you wouldn't take a paycheck from anybody. You know, for, for the things that you've been through and the things that you can, it can and will continue to overcome, guess what that is worth? A lot. But nobody has ever spoken that into your life. Up until now. Like, you should be able to look in the mirror and say, listen, I deserve to make $100,000 a year. By the way, you're going to hear from one of your fellow Polynesian sisters tonight because she has actually a story that came into our fold, and she's now making six figures. And you should see some of the things that she's went through. I won't spoil her story, but something to pay attention to. So when we look at PHP, he, he encouraged me to start my own YouTube channel called The Seven Figure Squad. Would anybody love to make seven figures? Cash, would you like to be a cash flow millionaire? Anybody? Okay, cool. So that's my one YouTube channel talks about. How to become a millionaire. How to think like a millionaire. How to strategize like a millionaire. And how to become a millionaire. By of those three, what do you think is most important? Think, strategize, or become. What do you think it is? Think. Who said think? You said, oh man, correct. Think. Why so? How many times have you seen somebody win the lottery? And then, years later, broke. they're broke again. <laughs> How many pro athletes have you seen sign multi, multi, multi million dollar contracts and then three, four years after they're done playing, guess what? They are broke. I'm driving, I drive a Rolls Royce. How many of you guys would love to drive a Rolls Royce? Okay, I drive a Rolls Royce. Guess who owned it? An NBA player. Because he finally got out to leave 14 years later. I'm like, bro, you want to let go of some of your toys? <laughs> I bought a brand new, to him, it was brand new, uh, a $400,000 Rolls Royce. I bought it for $100,000. And by the way, during tough times, if you have cash, guess what comes up? Opportunities. I'll give a quick story. 08, 09, how many of you guys remember 2008, 2009 when it was called the Great Recession? People are losing money in real estate. The four, you guys, you know those 401ks? By the way, I was so bad with money. How many, how many of you guys know that retirement plan 401k? Have you heard of it at a job? Here's how bad I was with money. I thought a 401k, because I'm in the Marines, right? I thought a 401k is like a long race. <laughs> Oh, bro, we got to, what? We got to march? <laughs> 401,000 miles? Dang! That was so bad. That's how bad I was with money. Had zero. By the way, April is financial literacy month. So you guys, you guys know what literacy means, right? What does illiterate mean? That you don't know how to read. You don't know how to write. You don't know how to sp might know how to speak certain words. But for the most part, you're illiterate because you don't know how to read or write. Correct? 
Well, it's Financial Literacy Month. What are they trying to say about financial literacy? That most people are what, literate or illiterate? So that's why I did dedicate, dedicate a month for financial literacy, for you to read and write and speak a different language. Because although I may not be Samoan, we do share some, similar, uh, some similarities, right? Most of us were raised in this language called Brokenese. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? You know, you know broken knees? Like you ever go down to the store, grocery store? Oh, mommy, I want to put that back. <laughs> mommy, can I? We don't have no money for that. <laughs> yeah, do you think we go to, what are we, millionaires? <laughs> and what do you start doing as a kid? As you get older, you just stop asking. And guess what happens to your dream machine? It stops working. And then you become an adult. And then you have kids. And if you didn't learn how to speak another language, guess what you feed into your kids? Broke knees. But you guys said you want to be a millionaire. How many of you guys said you want to be a millionaire? Right? So in other words, you got to speak what? Right, rich in knees. <laughs> That's right. They say rich in knees. Right? Yeah. You got you to gotta learn how to speak. Million knees, rich in knees, money knees. Cash in knees. You know what I mean? By the way, money's fun. And I just want to let you know, what, did, what was it Jay-Z? Was it Jay-Z? He said more money, more problems? Was it Jay-Z or was it ludicrous? Jay-Z? More money, more problems, right? No, no, no. I, I got to disagree with Jay-Z. More money, better problems. My wife and I, to this day, we still fight about money. To this day. <laughs> but here's the fight, though. Here's how the fight sounds. Well, babe, we're getting a $15,000 bonus. What are you going to do with it? None of your business. <laughs> Isn't that a cool fight? Keep, keep, your, keep your hands off my 15 straps. Right? Because you got your 15, I got my 15. <laughs> right? That's, that's a, that's, which church or charity are we giving to? Babe, we're going to give to this charity. No, 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 we're going to give to this charity. No, babe, I, I told them last month we're going to give to their charity. Oh, you make me look like any. Fine, here's a check for them. And a good thing, your argument over which charity to fund and finance, that's rich and ease. <laughs> See? So what's our mission? To save America by bringing back, it says there, free enterprise. What does free enterprise mean? You're free to buy, you're free to sell, you're free to try, and you're also free to fail. But guess what? How many guys work really, really hard at your jobs? Okay? And guess who profits the most from your hard work? The entrepreneur. Because they, they brought in the most risk. I'll explain why here in a second. Okay? Uh, if you want to make a lot more money, here's why. Back in 1990, this is what it cost to live. And the average guy, I don't know if you guys can see it, but the average income in America was $52,000 a year. Fast forward to 2019, it just costs more money, right? Gas, tuition. I was watching news before I got here. I mean, you guys have uh, seen the uh, UW saying, if you want to come back to UW, you have to get a vaccine, right? If you want to be back on campus, you got to get the vaccine. Otherwise, don't come back. Just study, just work with us online, right? So a lot of, a lot of colleges, they want you to come back, but you got to get a vaccine. And you, and you, and you still got to pay your 50000 a year for tuition, right? Uh, uh, raising a kid, how many, how, many, uh, how many parents here? Okay, good, there's parents, okay. I think we added up one time between the four, the four of us. Who's in, that, who's in that room for dinner? Is me, you, uh, Ace and May? Between the four of us, you know, we added up between us four couples. There's 26 kids between the four of us. <laughs> <laughs> Filipinos, Polynesian, we know how to populate the earth, man. <laughs> <That's>, <laughs> So we just know how to reproduce, man. We didn't pay our Wi-Fi or cable bill. We just <laughs> self you know, you know, self-entertainment, man, <laughs> right? <laughs> so here's the thing. Fast forward, things cost more money, right? 200, 300%. But what didn't increase by 200, 300%? Income. Income. I, I still remember being a bike messenger downtown Chicago before they invented email and fax machines. I know, I just dated myself. Forget about that part. 
So I used to pick up packages, email documents. I used to send it from one law firm to another. I was a bike messenger downtown in Chicago. And uh, I was getting paid uh, $4.25 an hour. Okay, so we're, we're talking about, you know, early 90s. So fast forward to 2000, 2021. Now they're talking about it being 15 bucks an hour. Think about it. It went from 4 bucks an hour to 15 bucks an hour, as if paying you 15 bucks an hour is really going to matter. Let's say you get, by the way, let's say they pay you minimum wage 15 bucks an hour. 40 hour work week, 52 weeks a year. How much is that per year? $31,500. In Tacoma, Washington, it's $31,500 enough for you to live by yourself, have your own apartment, have your own car. Barely. So why wait for somebody to pay you 15 bucks an hour? Remember I shared early, if you realize what you were worth, you wouldn't take a paycheck from somebody else. Maybe they were entering that conversation because we're speaking another language called rich and ease. <laughs> I won't be coming back to you often, bro, okay? Because you know today's reality. I'm going to go through this. Lack of financial liter uh, literacy. Uh, debt. People got more debt than they have savings. So if you want to make more money in 2021, how many guys would love to say 2021 is the last year I ever want to worry about money again? How many of you guys would, have, would love to say that? Okay, here's four steps. So, by the way, these four steps, if I never, ever see you again, which I hope I do, but if I never, ever see you ever again, hopefully remember these four steps. Number one, if you want to make more money and never worry about money ever again, you got to learn sales. You got to learn sales. By the way, fellas, in high school, do you, you realize the reason why you didn't ask the girl to homecoming you want to ask or the girl to prom you want to ask? you know why? Because not only did you have no game, <laughs> but you didn't know how to close. <laughs> and, and then she goes to prom with somebody like, why did she said yes to him. What? Because you didn't ask. Because you had no game. You didn't know how to approach. You didn't know how to ask. You didn't know how to close. By the way, anybody that you allow influential into your life, I don't care if it's a pastor, a politician, an athlete, an actor, guess what they know how to do? They know how to sell. They sold you an idea. By the way, you're probably good at sales too. You don't even realize it. And here's what you're selling yourself. You're either selling yourself an opportunity or you're selling yourself short. But you're buying it. See, who's good at sales? You. Let me go, let me go to church. Forget it. Don't, don't ask. Don't worry about it. The pastor, doesn't he, isn't he a good salesperson? Whoever you deem as your pastor, aren't they naturally good at sales? Think about that pastor real quick. How good are they at sales? They're really good at sales. Ministry leaders, pastors, they're really good at sales. You know why? The pastor sells you on a destination that they've never been to. <laughs> Let me tell you about heaven. You been there? Nope. Think about it. If you went to heaven, do you want to come back? Probably not. Right? And they're selling you a man they've, they've, they've never met. Let me tell you about this guy named Jesus. You ever, you, you ever meet him? No. <laughs> but give your life to him. <laughs> what? But they're selling you on it, aren't they? Because you want a better life. So guess what, naturally, if you decide to follow a pastor or any, anybody, whether you're a believer or not a believer, uh, atheist, agnostic, or you believe, right? Guess what you are buying? You're buying something that sold you an idea. How many of you guys are on uh, social media? Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, any, any TikTokers? Anybody here on social media? How many times have you ever ate something from somewhere, you took a picture of it, <laughs> you posted it on your social media platform? Yes? Guess what you're doing? You're selling. Don't even realize it. Man, this is good. <laughs> really? You tag the place. Guess what? You got people coming there. You don't even know they're coming there because you posted it on your profile. Don't even realize it. And how much did that restaurant pay you? And guess who's charging you can charge you for advertising that you never got paid for? Facebook, Instagram, because you're posting it. All I'm asking for you is, is to get in there. So number, number one, if you want to make more money, by the way, if you even want to get a job, if you want a better job, guess who you have to sell to hire you? The interviewer. If you want to get a pay raise, who do you have to sell to give you a pay raise? Your manager. So regardless if I see you ever again, which I hope I do, if you want to make more money in 2021 and beyond, you got to learn sales. Number two, if you want to make more money, consider entrepreneurship. Let me ask you guys a question. How many guys have cell phone? Raise your hand. Yeah? Uh, internet at the house. Yeah? Uh, how many guys have a car? 
Yeah? How many guys eat food? <laughs> okay. Better question. How many guys write those off on your taxes? Hmm. It's the conversation of broken knees, right? Or rich and knees. Guess what the rich people are saying when Donald Trump was never presenting his taxes? You know what they're saying? The guy probably doesn't pay any taxes anyway. Because they know the game. What's the game? Rich people don't pay taxes. So how come we do? Because we speak a different language. Because would you have the advantage to do? To speak a different language. Okay, those four things. Okay, if you're in business, and all the IRS says, if you're establishing a trade or business, the things I just mentioned can be deducted on your taxes. So if 50% of your cell phone use is used for business, guess what? You can write off 50% of your cell phone bill. If 50% of your Wi-Fi at home is used to grow a trade or business, guess what 50% of the uh, uh, inner bill should be? Tax deductible. If you go from this appointment to this point, to this point in your car, and it's business miles, 54, 55 cents per mile is written off on your taxes. If you're having a meal and you're talking business, 50% of the conversation now is what? Tax deductible. By the way, I love Sunday morning brunches. You know why? Because I'm sitting there with my kids. My mom's there. Guess what she likes to flip the conversation to? Business. Mom, you know, if you, so, as soon as you talk business, this now officially becomes a business conversation. Right off, right off, right off. It's on me. Think about that. Think about you having coffee with somebody talking about business. Your Starbucks bill is now 50% tax deductible. I got a video out there called How I Drive a Rolls Royce for 24 bucks a month. True story. How? Remember that Rolls Royce I bought from that uh, NBA player? Guess what he couldn't do? Write it off as a business expense because it's not a business. NBA player, you're an employee. NFL player, you're an employee. You're an, you're an employee of the NFL. You're an employee of the NBA. It's, which means that half your income whoosh, gets taken away in taxes. Question, did you realize why certain rich people live here and do business here in Washington? You know why? T right, income tax-free state. Okay, where's Amazon at? Do you ever wonder why they're here? Of all of the states they could, uh, the, they could pick to be a, in business in, why do they choose to stay here? Microsoft, where are they at? Why? By the way, this is two of the richest people in the world. Bezos and Gates, where are they at? California? They're where? Are you taking advantage of the state opportunities here in Washington? Because they're what? These guys are using rules that people that speak broken ease don't know about because they're not speaking rich and ease. It's a, just a different language. And here's the thing. You don't need money to make money. You ever hear that saying, you need money to make money? Bullshit. What's the word for bullshit in sign language? <laughs> 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 I'm just curious about that one, man. Right? <laughs> 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 is that what it is? Okay. Okay. So my wife and I took a $500 investment, which is the $199 it takes to start with PHP and the $300 to take license, right? It's 500 bucks, right? And we created a $42 million business out of it in the last six years. And it's paid us $6.3 million from $500. You think we might want to share those tips with you? Thanks to Mike and Jackie Pulalasi starting this whole operation in PNW. Something special going on up here. That's why my wife and I are up here. By the way, we could have chosen to go in any state. We're asked to fly anywhere, but there's a big pull for us here. Why? For the leadership of Mike and Jackie Pulalasi. Number three. Remember, I, I, who's all the hands of that uh, that said they work really hard? Hard workers. Here's what I realized. Hard work does not pay off. Damn. Well, my mama said, <laughs> my daddy said, eh, yeah, they're right for pride purposes, but not for wealth purposes. Guys, what did I just tell you? I have no college degree. I don't have a sales background. Business, I don't have a business background. I have an insurance background. So how the heck am I making a million dollars a year? Why did my direct deposits last month say $130,000 last month? For, for what? Because I learned to work in the right industry. There's always money to be made in money. Not the docks. Not the ports. <laughs> you think it is. Not in the trucks. Because as soon as those wheels stop, guess what happens? So does the money. 
Mike was talking about, you know, having a commode inside his truck so he can take a leak while he's driving. Because <laughs> I got to get there. Think about this real quick. Most, most businesses, once the doors close, what happened to most businesses during the pandemic? But ours grew 65%. Why do we why do we grow by 65%? So what do we prove ourselves? We prove ourselves not only recession proof, but also pan, pandemic proof. Because we use this thing called Zoom. And the rest of the world went on Zoom. Really, Matt? Are people buying life insurance during the pandemic? Yeah, because people realized that one day they could. <laughs> you know, you fill in the blank. And we better get some life insurance now. So more people were, were prone to purchase life insurance last year. By the way, I've been doing this for 22 years. It's 1999 to 2000, uh, 2021 now. Been doing this for 22 years. I've seen a dot-com bubble. Buy this dot-com website. And you guys probably even remember that. Right? Buy pets.com. Buy this dot-com. Buy this dot Everybody's buying a website. And 89% of them failed. Everything, everything, everybody said buy some stocks. Buy mutual funds. Boom, boom, boom. And then 01, 9-11 hit. Guess what happened? Everybody lost a lot of money in stocks, bonds, and mutual funds. And sadly, they sold at the wrong time. What happened in mid-2000s? Mid Everybody's getting real estate business, mortgage business. I was at an MMA uh, gym because my son and I were going to an MMA gym. That was his uh, after-school uh, activity, MMA, right? And uh, this guy's like, I'm leaving my job. I'm going to California to get involved in the mortgage business. Everybody I'm talking to over there makes $20,000, $30,000 a month. He literally left Chicago to go to California to make money in the mortgage business. What happened? 08, 09. Mortgage and real estate took a what? Tank. 401Ks became 201Ks. 50% loss, right? People lost a lot of money inside their stock market again. What is, what is everybody talking about now? Forex, Bitcoin, crypto, Dogecoin, NFTs. Now, with all those things, could you, make, could you have made money? Of course. But in 22 years, you know what's been most consistent? By the way, do you guys want income like this? Up, down, up, down, up, down. You want income like that? Or do you want income like this? Boom, 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 boom. Which one do you want? It's <laughs> a good one right there, right? That's the rich knees, Paul. So it sounds like, okay? The right industry. And the life insurance industry has shown its strength. Guess which industry between banks, real estate, stock market, and insurance, which crashed in 08, 09? Did banks crash? Yes. Mortgage companies, real estate companies? Yes. Stock market crash? Yes. Guess what didn't crash? Insurance. Insurance has been like, whoosh, steady. So if you want to work hard, work hard in the right industry. A lot of my military brothers and sisters, we work really, really hard, but we don't get paid. I used to get paid $20,000 a year after eight years in the Marines. You think we'd get paid for being in the Marines, taking a bullet for our country? No. My job that they were trying to recruit me to come out the military was being a cop or being a, a security contractor because I had a security clearance. They might have paid me 80, if I remember uh, uh, LAPD. I don't know if you guys ever remember that show, LAPD in California. But it's like cops, but LAPD version, right? So 90% of people I see on, on that LAPD show came to my unit because they were Marines, uh, reservists. So I see them on TV, but once a week I saw them at my unit because I trained them. And they get me a job. Hey, Matt, you want to be a, a cop? Sure. South Central LA. Shh, well, where? <laughs> South Central LA. Watts, Compton, Crenshaw. You know that movie, Boys in the Hood? You can be a cop right there, Matt. <laughs> how much? 90000 a year. Damn. Question, how, how, how often do I got to uh, unholster my weapon and protect my life every day? Oh, about three, four times. <laughs> Remember, I'm a single dad, three kids. You think I want to do that? I said, I might as just stay in the military. So, if you're going to work hard, work hard in the right industry. I hope I see you guys again, but if I never see you again, at least you go interview or establish a business in the right industry. Anyway, insurance was essential last year. Our guys traveling back and forth, not only have the driver's license out, but they had their insurance license out. If they got pulled over and said, listen, I'm an, insur I'm an insurance agent, I'm an essential worker, they let, let, they let us go to the office. Where's my Polynesians? Where's my Simone family, right? So, how do you, Crystal, how do you say that? There you go. That's your version of GoFundMe, isn't it? Not? It's a pain point. It says right here, you guys can't read that. It says right here, 
why is the, this, this situation here feeling like a cultural practice or, or, or just donating money that's getting out of hand? Because are funerals costing less or costing more? more? And guess what happens when people are being asked to take money out to contribute to this? Oh, again? Again? Again. And here's, here's the crazy part. Let's say you do raise money for uh, somebody that passed away. Okay? What happens to that money? One purpose, right? What's the one purpose for that money? In the ground. Does that money ever live life ever again? See, here's the way Rich and East talks. How do I spend a dollar to get ten back? That's the way Rich and East talks. So you want to speak broken ease? Oh, just spend it. Oh, we can barely afford it, but we got it. Rich and East says, if I spend a dollar, how do I get ten back? If I spend a dollar, how do I get five back? If I spend a dollar, how do I get 20 back? So your, your question here, if you want to build up your community, is if we're going to spend a dollar, would we rather have that dollar spent in our kids so they can go to school, they can come back with education and get a better job to help the, the rest of our community? We have our kids and spend and, and invest into business or businesses? Think about that, because that money is going to spend, be spent somehow, some way. Do you want to serve one purpose or 500 purposes? That's why Mike and Jackie are here. As soon as they saw this, like, man, this is, what a solution here for money to live life again. It's an, it's an, it's an opportunity for you to create legacies. So you see, financial literacy is so important and why this month is important to wrap your mind around the subject called money, the language of money, and why you should master money instead of it mastering you. Always remember that money is a language because how a man thinks, how he speaks, how he acts, then that's what creates a reality. Once I started making that small shift of speaking and thinking broken knees, to now speaking and thinking million knees, I began seeing and experiencing life in a much different way, and so did my family. New opportunities would present themselves, and I think to myself, holy moly, this was before me a month ago, a year ago. Now I know how to see and understand what an opportunity really is. And once we follow these three steps, our income skyrocketed, so therefore my wife and I and our family became a first generation cash flow millionaire. Mark Twain once said that a man who does not read has no advantage over the man who cannot read. So one step is financial literacy, but the other part of that is actually applying what you learn, doing what you learn, learning through success, learning mostly through failure, how to read and decipher and have progress installing a new language in your life, in your generation, and into your legacy. Because always remember, it's one thing to know, but it's a completely other thing to do. So before I let you go, please watch these other videos right here, how millionaires really make their money. This is a video about how millionaires make their money versus the other 90% who do not. And again, this is another live workshop that you should check out. And this other video here, is how this industry, this hidden industry, made my wife and I millions. And no, it's not Bitcoin, it's not crypto, it's not NFTs, it's not real estate. It's been an industry that's been around for over 2,000 years. So that being said, guys, please drop your thoughts, your comments, your questions, your follow-ups in the comment section below. And if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you click like, follow our business page, Money Smart Guy. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you click subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. That being said, guys, I'm your Money Smart Guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.